Hi, today we'll be talking about the budget constraint and this is a mind map of the video which is also downloadable on quickonomics.wordpress.com Okay, we will first start with the change in price Okay, so what happens when there is a change in price? Firstly, before we do any analysis, we will have to determine the real income first Okay, so how do we determine real income? Okay, just a quick revision. It is your income in terms of money divided by the price of a certain good. So this will be your real income in terms of X and this will be your real income in terms of Y. Okay, so let's say okay the price of X has changed. Okay, and what we get okay are three possible solutions. Okay, we'll start with the one on the extreme left over here. Okay, the price of X has decreased. Okay, so what happens is that it causes the budget constraint to rotate upwards. Okay, because we can buy more when the price of X has gone down. And uh, we have learned the notations in the previous video. And take note of the real income over here. We know that the real income here is lesser than the real income here due to the change in the price of X. Okay, if uh, the price of X increases what happens is that the budget constraint is going to rotate inwards okay, from here to here and once again take note at the real income okay this is bigger than this okay this sorry this is bigger than this because the price of x has decreased has, sorry has increased okay and this can also happen for good y the price of Y has increased, so therefore what happens to the budget constraint is that it rotates downwards like that. Okay, once again compare the real income. Okay, moving on to the change in income. Okay, a change in income, okay, what we are talking about here is in terms of monetary income, the amount of money the individual gets, okay, in terms of cash. Alright. So there's only two things that can happen. Okay, firstly, when the individual experiences an increase in income, what's going to happen is that his budget constraint is going to shift outwards, and the real income here is higher than this. Okay, and if his real income drops, okay, he just works in the opposite direction. The budget constraint shifts inwards. Okay. Alright, now we go to lump sum taxes and transfers. So, what is a lump sum tax? A lump sum tax okay, is basically um, the government making you pay a certain sum uh, at the end of every year. So, uh, basically a tax okay, is just a change in income. Your income decreases. Therefore, your budget constraint is going to shift inwards. Now, what is a transfer? A transfer, okay, uh, what we are talking about here is actually... Uh, the the government giving you, alright, uh, a lump sum, okay, not in cash but uh, in 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 kind itself. So that means the government may give you this quantity of X, you know, for free. So once that happens, okay, the dynamics is simply a horizontal line, okay, uh, denoting the quantity of X that has been given to the individual, at, and a parallel line. Okay, over here, which is parallel to the original budget constraint. So why is it a horizontal line here? Well, because at this point, we know that we can consume the same amount of Y, okay, up to we, cons we finish consuming X bar. X bar is the transfer in kind, because we do not have to pay for any Y, so therefore the gradient here is zero. Okay, so uh, this will be back to normal and take note of the notation over here. The real income over here will be I0 over PX0 plus X bar. Okay, so moving on to a per unit tax and subsidy in cash. Alright. So unit taxes and subsidies all right, changes the price of goods. Okay, so the notations of the new price, if let's say it's a tax, is going to be PX0 plus small letter T, where small letter T is the per unit tax. And a subsidy would be the price of X0 minus the subsidy itself. So what's happening here is that the government is giving you uh, a subsidy for every unit of X that you purchase. All right? So uh, this is what the graph dynamics will look like. Let's take a look at the tax first. 
Okay, so we know that with a tax, uh, the price of X is going to increase. So therefore, the real income should become smaller, and the budget constraint should be rotating downwards, just like this. And the notations for the real income will be this, I0 over PX0 plus the tax itself. Alright, and take note of this notation as well. And now we go on to the subsidy. Subsidy-wise, we know that it will make the price of X uh, lower. Okay, so we can actually buy more. Therefore, the individual's real income is going to rotate outwards. Okay, and take a look at the real income over here. It's going to be I0 over PX0 minus S, which is the subsidy. We will be experiencing multiple disturbances. Okay, the question might actually state that there will be a lump sum transfer as well as a unit tax or a unit subsidy followed by a unit tax. So let's take a look at the one on the left first. Okay, so this is the portion okay, which shows the lump sum transfer and this is the portion which shows the unit tax per unit tax. Okay, why is it that there is two possibilities? Because it depends on the size of the tax. Okay, if the size of the tax is big enough, okay, it will be outside. If it's small, it will be on the inside. Okay, so it really depends on the question, and sometimes you do have to give more than one possibilities, you know, to show your flexibility in thinking. All right now, going on the right side, we see a unit subsidy and a unit tax. So what has happened for the first portion here? This shows the subsidy. We can see that the the budget constraint has rotated outwards, and because of the subsidy, it makes things cheaper. Up to a certain point, x bar, okay, that is when the unit tax kicks in. So an example of this situation might be the government wanting you to consume a particular amount of x bar. Okay, they want you to consume lesser than x bar. Okay, so what happens is that they make they they will subsidize you if you consume less than x bar. But if you consume more than X bar, they are going to tax you. So this is one of the different policies that the government can come up with. Okay, so if you consume more than X bar, there's going to be a unit tax. Therefore, the budget constraint actually shifts inwards. All right. So take note at the notations of the of this uh, the gradients over here. Okay, and this will be the gradients that you would have to take note of in your uh, answering the question. Okay. Lastly we go to applying the indifference curve into the model itself. Okay. Now, take a look at this example. All right. So, here we see, okay, this is the, the black line, is the original budget constraint, and after some multiple disturbances, we see that there is a lump sum transfer followed by a unit tax. Okay, because the gradient of the slope is now steeper and it's rotated, it's rotated inwards, so we can see that this is a tax. Okay, so the individual originally could have been either at point A, B, or C, okay, as, denote, as denoted by its indifference curves. So there are three possibilities that the individual might have been originally, and now faced with the new budget constraint, is this individual better off or worse off? Now, if you look at A, we know that he can go onto a higher indifference curve, which is somewhere here. So you compare this and this, okay, he might have been here, so he is better off being on this indifference curve. As for point B, he is lower now as compared to somewhere here. Okay, for example, if his indifference curves go like that, so he is better off. And he was if he was at point C, he would have been worse off because if he was here originally, he will now have to go to a lower indifference curve, which is over here. However, take note about point C. Okay, in point C, the indifference curve might have looked like this initially. So he might be here, and because his but new budget constraint is formed in this way, okay, it might have been tangent to his original difference curve at point D. So it is neither worse off or uh, better off. He is equally satisfied. Okay, so we now know that when we apply the indifference curve onto questions that regard uh, that's regarding changing the budget constraint, we have to identify whether the individual will be better off or worse off. Okay, after all the disturbances okay, that has been made. Okay, so uh, I hope that you have uh, gained much from this video, and it is not difficult to talk about the changes in the budget constraint. Uh, all you have to do is to really decipher what the question wants you to do. 
okay you when you read the question read it carefully okay make sure that you fully understand it and uh, determine the the correct disturbance that 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 is occurred is it going to be a tax is it going to be a subsidy okay how will it change the price okay so these are the things that you have to think about when you're reading the question